Hi, welcome to the Focus on Innovation uh, seminar area. Um, my name is Alex Jan. Um, my seminar today is going to basically be about um, Live by Design is the title. Um, really, what I want you to take away from this is to sort of see some of our innovation equipment really in use and to get a feel for kind of what can be achieved really with kind of uh, different types of setups. Um, does anyone already play out live here already? Anyone sort of thinking about doing it? Some people, good, yeah. Um, there's lots of different options out there. Um, personally, I've um, used sort of quite a lot of different uh, formats. Um, I played uh, using sort of predominantly uh, Ableton and just sort of having almost like computer playback, um, but then using with like a MIDI controller, something like our launch pads, which is very good. And I know a lot of people that can achieve great results in the box. Um, but for me, the way that I work in the studio is kind of always about hardware um, and sort of having fun and just being sort of quite playful with it. Um, so yeah, but just a bit about myself. Um, I work for Innovation, but as an artist, uh, my name is Alex Jan, but also under Rhythm Logistics. Um, I've played hard techno live sets for sort of quite a number of years and released sort of quite a lot of acid uh, and just general kind of techno. So I've always kind of been interested in hardware and certain bits of kit that you'll probably be more familiar with, which we'll probably see on the screen and overhead in a moment. Um, so I've always kind of liked that hands-on sort of tactile feel uh, when working with this type of kit. And I said, there's no right or wrong like in anything in audio. Um, I think that's the sort of major sort of thing to remember. Um, there's, this isn't a way or the way. It's just the way that I like to personally work. Um, as I said, I know lots of different results can be achieved with sort of any kind of modest setup. And some people might think, oh, it's kind of overkill. But I think for what you can kind of get out of a system like this, um, it can be sort of really good fun. I've got a sort of re recent um, live set coming up uh, that we're playing at an innovation party at Superbooth uh, next week at Berlin. So this is actually kind of a bit of my setup that I'm going to be using out there. So I wanted to kind of give you a run through really of what I'm doing and, and sort of hopefully, if anything, give you a bit of inspiration to, or some ideas to sort of come and try and what, what can be achieved. Um, so just to kind of give you a bit of an overview really of what's going on, um, it's probably easier if you can see sort of overhead. Um, I've got sort of quite a lot of kit and boxes on the on the uh, worktop here. Um, it's all kind of centered around a DJ performance mixer. Um, I'm using the Model 1, but again, I've used sort of Zone 92s or maybe just a regular kind of studio desk like a Mackie or something like that. Um, I quite like the idea of using a DJ performance mixer personally, just because I am a DJ. I like to be able to just sculpt and EQ quickly and filter the kind of sort of performance things that we like to do um, when performing. Um, so that's kind of really the heart of the, of the system. I've then got next to, so you can probably see it, this little box here, which is uh, a MIDI clock, sort of an external MIDI clock. Um, that can run without the need for a computer, um, which is quite, quite a handy bit of kit. Um, at the moment, I've actually got it slaved from my laptop. So I've actually only got a couple of kind of sounds playing back from Ableton, which, again, it's like three loops or something that I've just got there just for the sake of, of, of using it. So those loops are going through this Focusrite Claret sound card here. Um, that then just gets put into a channel on the mixer, which is, is quite good fun. I've also got uh, an Electron Octatrack, which you can see here. Um, again, I use it, I'm certainly not uh, an in-depth user really of that product. Um, I kind of use it mainly just for loop playback um, and maybe controlling MIDI for the Novation Peak. Now, the Peak, um, it really features a lot of the kind of what I call the main sounds, if you like, of, of the set. Um, so the idea being if it's kind of a big bass sound or uh, potentially lead sounds or crazy kind of arpeggiators. With the three different oscillators that, that Peak has and the sort of fat sound that it has, I really kind of love being able to sort of do those kind of old school detunes and things like that with it. But it's a really, really powerful synth and we'll come sort of along to that in a bit. Um, my main sort of drums for this particular set um, is focused around uh, our Novation circuit. Now, obviously you can load many different sounds into that as well as the sounds that come built in with it. So I've actually loaded in sort of classic kind of drum sounds like some of the 909 and 808 sounds, for example. But the portability of it, and one of the things that, you know, I, I like to sort of try and travel as light as possible, you don't necessarily have to take kind of really expensive classic equipment to get a great result. So by being sort of quite crafty with the, um, the samples that you put on and some of the stock sounds are fantastic, you can easily kind of make beats on the fly, but then it can be quite a powerful drum sort of settings within your uh, seminar, uh, set, sorry. Um, next up uh, to that, we've got the Circuit Mono Station. Um, now this really is a really, really powerful synthesizer in its own right. Um, so it's very much like the base station engine, so it kind of has a really sort of classic sound, and some of the sounds that you can kind of get out of it are, are very, very good. 
It's paraphonic, um, so you can actually sort of have two oscillators which share the same VCA, so you're easily able to kind of make very interesting and weird and wonderful sounds with it. Um, but the really important part of it really for me is the AUX CV output um, and the CV gate outputs on it. That then connects up here to my modular system. So you probably see it if I stand back. So the modular system, Again, this is kind of a, a trimmed down version of my sort of studio setup, if you like. Um, the idea of this case really is to get kind of interesting and weird sort of intricate little sounds out of it. Um, and I kind of like being able to recall settings that uh, from the circuit mono station. Because it's got an inbuilt memory, I can easily kind of save my settings and go into different sort of pattern modes and sessions, which is, for me, really, really important. Um, just because there's certain things, when it all gets a bit out of hand kind of in the set, and because I don't really have much structure to it, I almost need to be able to bring it back to certain places when I need to. So that's quite a neat way of having something that's pretty wild and kind of out of control most of the time. We've kind of always got a way to sort of keep that um, nice and, and, re and sequenced as we want with, with the CMS, which is great. Um, we've got uh, a classic kind of sound over here on the TT303. It's not the original, um, but as I said, for the sake of traveling, it's quite portable, similar kind of feel and, and sound. Uh, in a live setting and through effects, I kind of don't necessarily hear masses of difference. So again, it's quite a, an important part of my sound being that I write acid predominantly in whatever sort of genre it is that I'm working with. Um, we've got because of the AUX sends really on my mixer, I've got two different effects units. So I've just got the even side here uh, handling uh, reverb duty. It's on horror show, which is <laughs> quite a wild setting for this setup. Um, and then I've got a uh, Boss Space Echo as well, which again kind of gives you that kind of dub delays, which are really, really nice. Um, it's kind of very instant in what can be achieved with it. Um, and again, it's not a massive unit that, that sort of takes up lots of space when traveling. So yeah, that's kind of the setup that I've got, and I said just to stress, really, the playback on the computer really isn't doing an awful lot. So, yeah, I'll just kind of take you through what's going on really on this particular setup. Um, let's bring up so the playback. So, for example, so what's going on here basically? So, I've got the drums here coming out of circuit, as I said. Now, what I love about Circuit is it's got these kind of uh, mutes on our mixer screen. So again, really useful. Um, I kind of like using mutes on an old school desk and obviously using a DJ mix, you don't have a mute like you have on a proper sort of uh, studio or live sound console. So you can easily start sort of bringing sounds in as you'd like. And because you've got all these different pattern settings, so for example, we've got sort of eight different variations. We've got four different kind of drum layers. Um, and what's really neat is you can also share sort of drum sounds within that. But you can go into sequencing, for, for example, let's say double kick. So it's quite hands on in what you can do with that. Um, and again, in the snare sort of sounds, you can start making some rolls, which I think is really, really useful. Um, Obviously, we're using the sort of dedicated clock here. We can easily start and stop the sessions again, um, which is quite useful. If, again, certainly if timing gets a little bit out, which sometimes it can, you can easily sort of stop that. That's why I use a dedicated clock like this. But you can also get quite nice results with this particular multi-clock unit because you can start offsetting the amounts to start getting a real kind of, what I call a real kind of record sound um, and be a little bit more loose in what you're doing, which I think is really, really good fun. So computer playback isn't doing an awful lot on this setup. It's just kind of doing that sort of dub sound, sort of stab. And I've got the auxes there, so I can start really adding that effect into what I'm doing. It's kind of a really nice sort of way of just starting to manipulate certain bits of the computer. Now, Circuit Mono Station and the computer are all kind of going through the Claret sound card. So they're actually sort of using up two channels on my mixer. So we start bringing in kind of this channel, you'll start hearing a bit of a loop. Which is just literally a top loop running on Ableton. It's really not very, a lot, not, not a lot of stuff going on there, which is quite useful. We'll start adding some drum rolls. very instant in what you can do. And I've got that pattern variation, so I can start bringing in other sounds. Start bringing in 
some of the circuit mono station just sort of start hearing that synth in, uh, in full effect. Just kind of added a bit of effect to that. taking out some of the drums. So you can kind of easily start to make breakdowns by just sort of EQing out and adding some effects to that. And I just, I love the circuit mono station because it's sort of really wild in what you can sort of get out of it. It's like this kind of real interesting sort of sound. You can actually sort of play it in live or record something on the fly. So you can really sort of start to, you know, have certain elements that are just kind of playing and then you can start bringing things in, which I love about it. So I've taken Circuit Mono Station out, now we bring in something out of the modular system. maybe bring in another layer. Uh, so the MIDI being controlled out of the octa track into uh, our peak synth here. So we'll start bringing that in with the volume, raise it on here, and then we can start bringing it in actually on the synth. sort of start making nice little sections with that. We're really opening up the envelope. Um, you kind of get this really kind of really nice kind of lush sounds out of it. backing off some of the effects, for example.
got really good in some nice uh, suspense in the mix. Sort of taking on to the next section, for example. So notice I'm just kind of bringing in certain things all at once, and sometimes taking it all out, but sort of stripping it right back. really starting to you know go into the set in much more sort of detail and you can start going off in sort of little random places i just i really love the sort of hands-on 
uh, approach really of working like this. I haven't actually got anything else kind of running on the laptop, as I keep saying. It really is just all the instruments kind of in time and you can just start bringing things in. Um, I said, for me, that really is the sort of most fun really of, of working like this. Um, and it kind of, no set is ever the same. You can sort of pre-prepare stuff and it can be very similar no matter where you go. So you never get the same result. I mean, I've even sort of turning up today, you know, connecting certain things, you'd sometimes connect it differently or you know, something kind of goes awry. But it's kind of nice in a way because you're always getting something kind of real and unique. And for my music, kind of that's where I get the biggest enjoyment really. So yeah, hopefully that's um, been an interesting kind of uh, overview really of kind of what, what can be achieved.